Let's say you're doing your research month and your preceptor has assigned you to participate in a study to determine the cardiotoxicity of azithromycin, which is a macrolide antibiotic you learned about in the microbiology section. One group of patients taking azithromycin is compared with a matched group of patients not taking antibiotics. The study showed that the azithromycin group had an increased risk of cardiovascular death. The boards will frequently ask the question, what type of study design is this? In this lecture, we will be identifying and differentiating between the different types of studies that you will see in your medical training and we'll go over some example cases. We will break down the chart in your book to compare the different study designs and be able to distinguish their unique measurements. First up, we have case series. This type of study involves descriptions of a group of patients who all have something in common, whether it be a disease, a treatment, or an outcome to a specific therapy. This is the type of study that is used to describe clinical findings and symptoms. It is not able to establish any risk factor association. A cross-sectional study asks what is happening at this exact point in time because it takes place in the present time. It collects data from a group of people to assess the frequency of disease and the frequency of risk factors at a particular point in time. It is a snapshot study design. In other words, it gathers data about exposures and outcomes simultaneously. While it can show risk factor association with disease, it does not establish causality. The characteristic measure for cross-sectional studies is disease prevalence. Do you remember what prevalence means? Disease prevalence is defined as the proportion of people in a population who have a disease at a particular time. An example of a cross-sectional study will be looking at smokers versus non-smokers and their frequency of peripheral vascular disease. Here, you are collecting data in the present moment to assess the frequency of peripheral vascular disease within a group of smokers versus a group of non-smokers. Okay, so what is the major weakness of this type of study? It only shows correlation, but doesn't prove causation. A case control study asks, what happened? Because it is observational and retrospective. It looks into the past and compares a group of people with disease to a group without disease. The cases are the subjects with disease, the controls are subjects without disease, and in any case control study, you are analyzing previous exposure. The typical metric for case control studies is the odds ratio, which in this context is defined as the ratio of the odds of exposure in the case group to the odds of exposure in the control group. Next up is the cohort study. A cohort study can be prospective, in which case it asks who will develop disease, or it can be retrospective, in which case it asks who developed disease. It compares a group with a given risk factor to a group without the risk factor to assess whether or not the risk factor increases the likelihood of disease. The cohort is the group with the given risk factor and, in a prospective study, you will follow the cohort into the future to see if they get the disease of interest. The characteristic metric for cohort studies is relative risk, which is defined as the ratio of the probability of the event occurring in the exposed group versus a non-exposed group. This study answers the question, how much more likely is the patient to develop COPD if they smoked cigarettes? A different example of a cohort study is the famous Framingham Heart Study. One thing this cohort study examined is uncontrolled hypercholesterolemia and future risk of myocardial infarction. Here, you are looking into the future to see if groups with uncontrolled hypercholesterolemia have a higher likelihood of developing a myocardial infarction in the future than groups without uncontrolled hypercholesterolemia. Twin concordance studies 
Compare the frequency with which both monozygotic twins and both dizygotic twins develop a disease. This measures the heritability of a disease. Specifically, the more concordance a disease shows for monozygotic twins relative to dizygotic twins, the greater the heritability of the disease. Adoption studies compare siblings raised by biologic versus adoptive parents to separate heritability from the influence of environmental factors on disease. Ecological studies compares the frequency of disease with the frequency of risk-related factors across populations. These types of studies are used to monitor population health, especially in a time when environmental concerns have been on the rise. Drawback from this type of study is that it creates population data that is typically not applicable to the individual. This is known as the ecological fallacy. Okay, flash quiz time. Which study is designed to look at a group with disease and a group without the disease, asking the question, what happened? The answer is case control study. Remember, case control study looks into the past to see what are the events that may have increased the odds of an outcome. Going back to the question from the beginning of the lecture, a study was conducted to determine the cardiotoxicity of azithromycin, a macrolide antibiotic you learned about in the microbiology chapter. One group of patients taking azithromycin is compared to a matched group of patients not taking any antibiotic. The study showed that the azithromycin group had an increased risk of cardiovascular death. What type of study design is this? The answer is B, cohort study, and it is prospective. We know that it is a cohort study because the question tells us we are comparing two similar matched groups. Additionally, one group of patients experienced an exposure, the azithromycin, and are now being observed for the development of a disease. This is prospective because both groups are being monitored for future events. For the bonus point, What kind of information can be extracted from this type of study? That's right, relative risk of azithromycin exposure and cardiovascular death. In this video, we learned case series, cross-sectional, case control, cohort, crossover, twin concordance, adoption, and ecological studies are commonly used in medical research. Going over multiple case study questions and reading actual research journals are your best bet to getting down the subject which can be challenging to someone just starting to grasp these concepts. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click thumbs up if you enjoyed this video.